Hi guys, Jamie at Clean Amateurs here. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today we're back with kind of some science and technology stuff and just a couple of electronics projects that I've been playing around with. Uh, now when I was a teenager I used to be super into playing around with kind of little electronics projects. Something I kind of grew out of I guess, but watching some YouTube videos lately and also talking to some of my students, it's something I've realised I am still quite interested in. So I brought a breadboard, um, which for those who don't know is a little prototyping board that's just easy to plug and unplug components from. And today I'm going to be making two different variations on a laser audio transmitter. Uh, now these aren't my own original ideas, these are things that I've got from tutorials and videos online. I'll put lots of links down in the description if you want to have a go at these yourself and you want to find out where I learned about them. If you do decide to have a go at some of the things I do in this video, then please obviously do show due care if you're using mains electricity in particular. Do make sure that you know what you're doing with polarity of some components. Can If you get them backwards, they can overheat and such. And finally, if you are playing around with lasers, make sure you're working with nice low-powered lasers that are suitable for your application. If you are going to work with more powerful lasers, make sure you wear suitable light protection. The laser I'm using in this video is less than 5 milliwatts, and I was consistently pointing it away from it. I did occasionally catch the reflection coming towards me, but I knew it wasn't a huge hazard. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The first circuit we're going to build is using a capacitor, a transistor and a resistor to modulate the current going to the laser such that we get that modulation in the laser output and we can detect that as sound using the solar panel. Okay, so starting off with our transistor in the middle there. R T I P O C one C. Then off of that, we are going to connect our one thousand ohm or one K sister. Hopefully it's going to be connected around like this once we're done. Okay, and then still onto this common terminal, common pin in the middle, we're going to connect our capacitor. Making sure the polarity is correct, remember that the long pin or the long leg on any of these electrical components tells us that's the positive. So that's our 22 micro farad capacitor. Once we've done that, we're going to connect up one terminal of our laser module, so just draw that as Less missing diode, so it's not great. Light missing diode there. We're then gonna connect up our audio jack, which I'll just kind of draw. Okay, and all I've done with that is I've taken an aux lead, chopped it in half and found the red cable and the white cable in there, um, just leaving the common one to the side and attaching crocodile clips to the red and the white. Obviously, colouring may differ, so you might have to experiment a bit. Once we've got that, we're going to hook up our power supply. So we are using my breadboard's 5 volt supply. Okay, and there we have it. That's basically what our circuit is going to end up looking like.
Now, this isn't my circuit. This is courtesy of S R Electric. And if, like me, you're getting into or you are already into um, electronics projects, then definitely go and check out the SR Electric channel. He has loads of great projects over there, and watching him solder is super satisfying. Okay, so we have the first two circuits set up, and a few minutes ago I sat and I just played a few scales on the mandolin, and I recorded them on this old phone. So you can hear them here coming through the phone speakers. Okay, so that's coming out the phone speakers. What we're now going to do is plug our aux lead, which is attached to our laser circuit, into the phone. Hit play now. There is no music coming out of the phone speakers. What we've got here is a speaker and attached to its aux lead I've got this little tiny solar cell or solar panel. So it's like the type of solar cell that you'd maybe run like garden fairy lights off of or something. So we're going to power up the laser. So that's with no signal going into the audio input, so that is just, you might be able to hear that chittering away at the frequency of the laser. But we are now going to start the audio signal from the phone via the aux lead to the laser. Here goes. Okay, I do also have a 3 volt setting on my breadboard power supply, so let's just shift over the bridge and try this at 3 volts as well. So it's still got light, but it is notably fainter, so let's see if we've still got music. Here it goes. Okay, so as you saw there, we did still get music coming out, but the quality was even poorer and a lot quieter. But maybe benefit from some sort of amplifier circuit at the uh, solar cell end, which I have seen people do and get really good results with. I will pop a link um, in the description to a brilliant French guy who has made something like that. I'm afraid I can't think of his name right now, but I will pop a link to his excellent video in the description. So that was the first of our two circuits using the cheaper components, but a few more components, so a little bit more challenge there. This would be really good if, for instance, you were doing it at a school, um, maybe with a class or a club or a scout group, something like that. Basically, if you had young people or other people who wanted to teach a bit about electronics, having a few different components in there that are all quite cheap would allow you to do lots of these. What I'm going to do next is just using a, an 8 to 1300 ohm transformer. This is a slightly more expensive part and a much simpler circuit, so this would probably be more suited to a demonstration that you can set up and pack up very quickly. So let's see how to put it together. Okay, so circuit diagram for our second circuit is super simple. We're going to use the same kind of cannibalized aux lead, which again I'll just kind of draw. We've got our two wires coming off of that. But now what we're going to do with these is these are just going to go straight into the input, so the 8 ohm side of 
our transformer. If I remember right, it's an 8 1300 ohm audio transformer. Okay, on the other side, this is then just going to be collect connected in series with our power supply. And our laser diode. So let's just move that a bit closer so you can see what's going on. So this transformer, when it detects, or rather when there is a current in the headphone cables, this will cause a, an induced current in the 1300 ohm side of the transformer, thereby disrupting the current and causing it to kind of waver. So rather than having a nice steady kind of current and voltage, hopefully we get something that looks a bit more like an audio trace to then be detected by our solar cell and hopefully heard out of the speakers. Okay, so our second circuit is even easier than the first, but it does take a bit of lateral thinking to get it set up on a breadboard. For those who don't know, on a breadboard, these kind of rows, top and bottom, are all connected so that you can power, uh, power them, have your power supplies tap into there, and then these rows going across are connected so that you can have components in any given column all connected together. However, this groove in the middle shows that this half is isolated from this half. So when we use our transformer, what we're going to do is we're going to have the 130 ohm side facing that way. And we're going to pop that bridging the two halves of the breadboard. What this means is that all of the pins are now isolated from each other on their own little column, allowing us to use this as we need to. So we've got our transformer on there. We're then going to pop our power supply on there. We're going to put our laser to between our power supply and the 130 ohm side of our transformer. We're then going to complete that circuit. It's so going from the negative terminal of our power supply to the other terminal on this side of the transformer. And finally, just like last time, we've got an aux lead which has been chopped in half. I found the red wire, the white wire, um, these green ones I've just bent backwards. Got crocodile clips on there, so I can use this for a bunch of stuff. Um, I know this is all a bit convoluted, most of it's not important. Um, I've then got some jumper wires on here, and then just this bit of foam and a hair tie to stop the two from shorting out. What we're gonna do is just pop that onto this side of Pins out here, I'd lost track. Put this onto this side of our transformer. Okay, once again, the laser should light right away when switched on, um, and then we can see what music quality is like when we use it to transmit music. Yeah, so we have laser light, and we are back on the 5 volt bridge on the breadboard power supply. So let's grab a speaker, grab a solar panel and see what it sounds like. Okay so once again I have a recording of me just playing some scales on the mandolin, again this is through the phone speakers. Okay what we're going to do once more is we're going to plug this into our laser setup. We're going to turn on our speaker system. Powering on. And we are going to see what it sounds like.
Okay, so there you have it, another way of transmitting sound using a laser. Now to my ear that didn't sound as good quality, it definitely sounded a lot more, or not a lot more, but a bit more distorted, neither of the sound qualities were great. Um, but this is a much simpler setup if you want to set this up as a, maybe a very quick demonstration for whatever your purposes are. The other one obviously takes a little bit more setting up, a little bit more fiddling around with, but is actually a lot cheaper to produce. And there you have it, those are two different ways of transmitting audio using lasers and then detecting it using a solar panel. The audio quality isn't great but it is quite a fun demonstration, could be quite useful for maybe explaining the concept of fibre optic or various other things. One thing I have found these aren't great with is transmitting voice. Um, I didn't use any actual music today besides the uh, scales I was playing on the mandolin because I didn't want to run into any copyright issues. When I have played music over this system, I do find that the voice is really drowned out a lot and maybe by tweaking uh, the amplifier circuit or adding an amplifier circuit at the solar cell end, we could get better voice transmission. All sorts of, sorts of things you can use this circuitry for, probably not for actually playing music playback, that's kind of a bit pointless, um, but as I've said, there's some really fun concepts you can demonstrate here. I also think it would be really fun to work something like this into maybe an escape room or a treasure hunt, um, and that's maybe something I'll try to do next time I write one of those for friends of mine. But hopefully you found this video interesting, hopefully you found it helpful. As I've said, these aren't my original ideas. Do check out the links in the description for more detailed information and the original source of these ideas. Right now though, I've been Jamie, this has been Clue Amateurs, and I'll see you next time.